Assalamu alaikum. I wanted to share a very simple observation on the importance of reading the Quran directly and to check some of the assumptions that we have about what it is that the word of Allah says and what it doesn't say. And on purpose, I wanted to choose one of the passages in the Quran that is already most familiar to many of us, and that's the Surah Al-Fatiha, the opening chapter of the Quran. And uh, so we're going to go and have a look at it. Of course, it's already so beloved to so many. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Maliki Yomitin, Ia can abudu, Ia can a stain, Ethina Srot al Mustaim, Srot al Levin and Amta Alehim, Rairul Magdubi Alehim, Waladolin. Amen. And I want us to focus on the very last verse in this ayah, in this surah. Surat al Ladin and Amta Alayhim, Rayr al Magdubi Alayhim, Waladolin. So let's take a look at the way that that particular passage gets translated. Um, Muhammad Asad translates it as the way of those upon whom thou hast bestowed thy blessing. And then pay attention to the maqdubi alayhim, not of those who have been condemned by thee, nor of those who go astray. Hmm. I want you to keep track of the ways that some of these different Quran translations translate that word, uh, maqdubi alayhim. Uh, the Malik translation of the Quran translates it as the way of those whom you have favored, not of those who have earned your wrath or of those who've lost the way. So again, here, the maqdub ends up being translated as not of those who have earned your wrath. The Mustafa Khattab translation ends up saying the path of those you have blessed not those you are displeased with or those who are astray. So what do all of these translations have in common? That phrase maqdubi alayhim, they're attributing that to Allah. Not of those who are condemned by you, not of those who have earned your wrath, uh, not those you are displeased with. And this is a pattern in many of these Quran translations. Uh, Pikthal, one of the important early Quran translations, says the path of those whom thou has favored, not the path of those who earn thy anger, nor of those who go astray. So here's the part that I want us to come back and pay close attention to what it is that the text of the Quran actually is saying. I'm aware that there are Quranic commentaries and Hadith traditions that indeed do go in that direction. But I want us to be focused on what it is that the text of the Quran itself is saying. When the Quran talks about blessings in this context, what do we get? Ihtina Surat al Mustaqim, O God, guide us to the path straight. Surat al Ladina an Amta alayhim, the path of those an Amta who have received the Ni'mah, the blessing. And an Amta is put in the active sense, the way of those whom you, singular Allah, you have blessed. But when it comes to maqdub, ghadab, wrath, anger, that is put in the passive case. غَيْرُ الْمَقْذُوبِ alayhim, Those who are 
under wrath. Isn't that interesting? So when we're speaking about blessing, about ne'ema, that is an active, direct blessing from Allah. But when it comes to not the way of those whose portion is wrath and anger, it is put in the passive case. In the Quran itself, the wrath and the anger is not directly attributed to Allah. This could be the way of those who have brought down upon themselves wrath and anger. And indeed, sometimes we do see people whose portion in life, whose sustenance in life seems to be to live a life of wrath and anger. Not righteous indignation at injustice, but a kind of self-generated venom towards nature, themselves, their community, their family, the world. And sometimes we have to go directly to what the Quran is saying, to sit with it, to read it in light of traditional interpretations that open it up. What do we do with this idea of blessings coming to us directly from Allah, but wrath being something that is perhaps self-generated? Um, we do have sayings of the chosen one, the blessed prophet, that say things like, God has a mercy and God has a wrath, but God's mercy, God's rahma, comes before and it goes after and it envelops God's wrath. Mercy is more fundamental to Allah. So I want to read for you a translation, which is both a translation and an interpretation. It comes from an American Muslim um, Imam, Imam Bilal Hyde. I've included this in uh, my book, Radical Love. Uh, this is not a word by word translation, but I think in some ways it gets us closer to what it is that the actual text of the Quran is saying. So the Fatiha, she that opens. We begin in the name of God, everlasting mercy, infinite compassion. And of course, in um, some of our uh, offerings, the heart of the Quran course, we go into great depth at talking about the linkage between the qualities of Allah as the Rahman and Rahim and the womb. Praise be to God, loving Lord of all the worlds, everlasting mercy, infinite compassion, eternal strength of every living being, whose majestic power embraces us on the day of the great return. Only you do we adore, and to you alone do we cry for help. Guide us, O oh God, on the path of perfect harmony, the path of those whom you have blessed with the gifts of peace, joy, serenity, and delight. Now pay attention. The path of those who are not brought down by grief-stricken rage. Hmm. The path of those who are not brought down by grief-stricken rage. He puts the agency on us. We're the ones who summon punishment. Maghdub is not attributed to Allah directly the way that the blessings are. The path of those whom you have blessed with the gifts of peace, joy, serenity, and delight. The path of those who are not brought down by grief-stricken rage the path of those who are not lost along the way. Amin. So be it. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you in this uh, holy month of Ramadan. May it be helpful in terms of offering some insights about reading the Quran closely and opening up ourselves 
to the possibilities that are included in it.